next story is now about inspiration and a little coffee house that uses ArcGIS. Every day, the folks at Starbucks go to work hoping to do two things, share great coffee with our friends and help make the world a little better. That was true when the first Starbucks opened in 1971, and it's just as true today. Starbucks has a vision to bring the coffee house tradition to the world, a vision to create a third place. Our first place, of course, is home. Our second place is work. Starbucks has become the third place, the place that fosters conversation, enhances community, and invites innovation. It's a third place for all of us. So please welcome, from the Starbucks World Headquarters, Patrick O'Hagan, Zachary Kristoff, and Lawrence Norton. Welcome, welcome. Now, before they start, I have another little short story. They invited me up to their world headquarters to meet the team, and they took me up to the secret seventh floor. And up there, they have this magical room, their tasting room. We go in, it's lined with cups and cups, hundreds of them with coffee beans. And you can imagine the aroma that was filling the room. And then they said, well, do you want to try some of our latest and newest brands? And what I said is, I'm sorry, I don't like coffee. <laughs> and they were heartbroken. And I was incredibly embarrassed. It was the worst experience I've ever had in my life visiting a customer, visiting one of you. So while I do not really enjoy coffee, I do believe you will enjoy their story and their location platform strategy. Please, Lawrence, the stage is yours. Thanks, John. Welcome to Starbucks. How may I help you? Over 70 million customers every week hear that. It's because the customer is at the center of what we do. That's how we've become the third place. We've spent over 40 years building our relationship with many of you, our customers. Together, we've created a place for communities, conversations, and connections. Every day, Starbucks strives to provide a world-class customer experience in our coffee houses. In IT, we have the same mission, to provide our business customers with world-class business intelligence and information products. Whether it's coffee or IT, the customer is at the center of what we do. We started big with GIS, tackling one of our business customers' most critical challenges. How do we continue to grow responsibly as a company? Here's Patrick O'Hagan, my business partner, to show you our world-class market planning and store development application that we call Atlas. Thank you, Lawrence. Have you ever wondered how we locate a new store? What is the magic behind the 20,000 plus stores we have worldwide? Well, to provide you that information, I probably need to get non-disclosure agreements from everyone in the audience. And given that isn't really feasible, how about I spend the next couple minutes on what I can share with you? 700 plus partners, what we at Starbucks call employees, in 15 countries start their new store journey in Atlas, our market planning and business intelligence system. What you see in front of you is Atlas for mainland China, where we currently have 1,200 stores and are now opening a new store almost every year. Sorry, every day. <laughs> One of the key differentiators. <laughs> is how we resonate with our local community. Because of this, new store decisions are made by local partners in the field. Let's go to one of these local markets, a tiny market, population 2 million in Nanning, Guangxi, where we have eight locations but are growing fast. One of our local partners in the field, Penny Chen, works, makes, works and makes decisions around new stores in Nanning. Penny can't do her job without Atlas. Here are some of the many layers that are integral to her decision-making around new stores. Things like trade areas, retail clusters and generators, traffic and transportation nodes, and demographics. After analyzing a new market and neighborhood, Penny utilizes Atlas to pinpoint new store decisions. For instance, in this part of Nanning, three new office towers 
will be completed over the next two months. After adding a new target area, Penny has provided a workflow window which helps to progress the site through approval, permitting, construction, and eventually opening. This is how we start with the idea of a new store and bring it all the way through to the cutting of the green ribbon. And the same thing happens here in the US. In fact, our most recent store opened on July 3rd in Los Galtos, California. With that, I'll pack, pass it back to Lawrence. Thanks, Patrick. Atlas has been and continues to be an incredible success story for us. It's a large GIS application that includes workflow, analysis, and store performance. At Starbucks, we came to the realization that one size does not fit all, whether it's coffee or IT. For our business customers, this means a location strategy that includes everything from web maps to Atlas, uh, applications like Atlas and everything in between. The next step in our GIS journey was to extend the Esri platform beyond the Atlas application to expose the geospatial capabilities to everyone at Starbucks. The portal has become our third place. It is the destination for GIS. Welcome to Starbucks GIS, how may we help you? Or better yet, how can we help you help yourself? Let's take a quick peek behind the curtain to see a few of the valuable information products that we have on our portal today. Global safety and security needed an application to help them protect our Starbucks partners and assets. Something bigger than a web map, but with a minimum of customization. Here's our Navigator application. We're zoomed into Denver, and you can see our coffee houses. To do contingency planning, to create policies and procedures, and to protect our partners, we use information like the Crime Index for robberies. Our business partners in store development don't just build new stores. They're constantly renovating and improving existing stores to keep them locally relevant. One example is the Clover Brewing System. If you're a coffee lover like me, you've got to try a Clover. When you order a clover, you watch as a stainless steel filter lowers into the brew chamber. Hot water is added at a precise temperature to brew your coffee for an ideal length of time. A thermal blanket surrounds the brew chamber to keep water within one degree of the ideal temperature. The result is the best cup of coffee you will ever taste. Hot, aromatic, and incredibly flavorful. This map shows five-minute drive times to existing clover stores. When you overlay areas of high coffee expenditure, you can see potential targets to expand the Clover brewing system. One of the most important initiatives at Starbucks is our mobile platform. When we started offering the ability to mobile pay, customer satisfaction increased, and customers moved through the lines faster. We hear from customers that they love knowing how many stars they've collected and when they get their next reward all on their phone. This map is an outlier analysis of smartphone ownership. The light green areas are islands of high smartphone ownership and otherwise low ownership areas. There are several areas in the southern US where smartphone ownership is generally low, but we have pockets of high outliers. Most of our coffee houses are in those locations. We want these customers to start using our mobile app. In addition to expanding the Starbucks experience to your smartphone, our new Starbucks Evenings initiative extends our beverage selection to a couple of my favorites, beer and wine. You heard it, beer and wine is coming to Starbucks. This map shows pilot locations along with wine away from home purchase patterns. As we look to roll out the Starbucks Evening menu to more and more locations, we can target existing coffee houses in areas with high spending patterns. With the success of the portal, exciting things are happening. This prototype application shows the integration of several indicators that are important to our business customers. We are reaching new business customers by integrating our enterprise business systems with our spatial data warehouse and web services to see the world and our business in new ways. Here we are looking at coffee purchase patterns along with current coffee house locations. We've integrated this into our enterprise data warehouse, updated with millions of records every day. The power of this integration is in connecting it with our sales, which, as you can imagine, I can't show you. <laughs> our business customers care about both internal and external indicators. Here we are connecting to AccuWeather's forecasted real field temperature data. Let me tell you one of the secrets I can share. When it's really hot out, some people prefer a cold beverage. 
This forecasted temperature data can help localize marketing efforts. One example is over in Memphis. It's going to be really hot next week. We can select a group of coffee houses and get detailed information on past and future weather patterns, as well as store characteristics. We can use this to geo-design a localized promotion for Frappuccinos, helping us anticipate what our customers will be wanting a week in advance. We also look at major events and the impact they have on our coffee houses. Let's go to San Diego and see what's happening. We all know about this conference, but did you know that this weekend there'll be 150,000 people in town for the Pride Parade? As you can imagine, our local baristas will be serving a lot of customers. To ensure the best possible customer experience, we can use this local event knowledge to plan staffing and inventory. At Starbucks, we strive to have a positive impact everywhere, from our communities where farmers grow our beans, to our roasting plants and our neighborhood cafes. Sustainability and social responsibility are as important to us as it is to our customers. And this story map takes us on this journey from bean to cup. Malawi is nicknamed the warm heart of Africa due to its tropical climate and warm people. I think the Malawi coffee bean is just as inviting. Here are the farms where this amazing coffee is grown. The coffee bean is actually the seed of a coffee cherry. When they're ready, they're harvested, processed by local farmers. And to support the farmers in their communities, Starbucks developed coffee and farmer equity practices focused on workers' rights, economic transparency, and waste management. To help facilitate these standards, we've built farmer support centers all over the world. Here are the three we have in Africa. Once the beans are ready, they travel from the port of Nakala to Seattle, Washington, where the beans are tested for quality, roasted, packaged, and shipped to coffee houses all over the globe. When the beans are sold, programs like Ethos Water and Red's Global Fund help us serve communities in Africa and across the world. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes sneak peek at how GIS works at Starbucks. We are creating the third place destination for our business customers. Coffee or IT, the customer is at the center of what we do. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Lawrence, Zach, Patrick. Now, while I still don't drink coffee, I am completely sold that there's so much more behind Starbucks than just coffee. In fact, I now drink Evolution Fresh, a Starbucks fruit juice that's actually manufactured in the city of Rancho Cucamonga. This year's President's Award winner. Is that a coincidence? Is it smart economic development? I'll leave it up for you guys to figure that one out. Thank you guys again.